Hello everyone, my name is Alex Krejci and I'm a project engineer here at DMC. Today I'm going to be talking to you a bit about USB charging and powering of devices. So just a brief outline of what I'm going to discuss today. First I'm going to go over USB, the protocol and sort of how it came to be. Um, and then I'm going to talk specifically about the battery charging specification that was released in 2009 and um, the three different charging ports that are defined there and then also Apple's own um, proprietary charging specification. So USB has really become the standard of connectivity for devices nowadays. Um, however, when it was originally created, it was not intended as a power supplying bus or a charging bus. But the widespread use of it and the availability then of a five volt power line uh, slowly adapted it into a you know a powered bus or a charging bus. Because of that, there was an addendum created in 2009 to address this use of USB cables. Uh, just a quick outline of the different cables you're likely to see. Um, typically nowadays you see a type A, B, and then the different micro, usually a micro B adapter for cell phones and the like. Um, and then on the left I just have the the wiring. Uh, most USB lines contain a 5 volt power line, a ground, and then two data lines that are plus and minus lines. I'm not going to get into much detail about the pro specific USB communication protocol today, more just talking about the power and charging portion of it. So as I said in 2009, the USB Foundation released the battery charging specification. And this spec filled in gaps for power supply and battery charging that were not present in the original spec. Um, and primarily introduced three different types of ports. The standard downstream port, which is what everybody's used to using as a standard USB communication port. And then a charging downstream port and a dedicated charging port. Um, and then on the next page here, this is just a short summary of the different um, hardware configurations of these three ports from the connection side. So the first one I'll talk about is the standard downstream port. And this is what you're used to seeing just on your computer or any other device that communicates with your phone or USB device. Um, it allows up to 100 milliamps before the, the negotiation, so before your computer talks to the USB device and decides what it is. After negotiation, it can supply up to 500 milliamps, and then this has been all up to 0.9 amps or 900 milliamps for USB 3.0. Uh, it also has to be capable of going down 2.5 milliamps if the host computer or device suspends this, uh, your phone or something. So if, essentially if you put your laptop to sleep or something, it's going to tell the devices to suspend and only draw 2.5 milliamps. Uh, in terms of recognizing this port, um, the USB data lines are just going to be pulled to ground um, through a 15 kilo ohm resistor, it can go all the way up to 25, but this is how a certain device detects whether or not it's been connected to a standard downstream port. The next port that was added was the charging downstream port. And now this is a multi-purpose port. So it still has capabilities of doing communication, but it has increased the capability of power draw up to 900 milliamps for high speed communication and all the way up to 1.5 amps for lower full speed USB communication. Um, the detection of this style port requires a hardware handshake, um, which is in more detail in section 3.2.3 of the spec. Um, and this typically requires some sort of hardware support either on your computer or whatever you're plugging the device into. Um, and this isn't widely seen, but there's hubs and different chips that can be implemented to essentially include this hardware and allow whatever device you're plugging in to detect that it's getting plugged into a charging downstream port. And then lastly, we have the dedicated charging port. And this is what we'll typically see in wall warts, um, any sort of just power only USB connection that you'll see for charging your phone or plugging and powering a device. And this uh, is allowable up to 1.5 amps. And obviously there's things that don't meet this spec that can even supply more than that. And this is detected essentially by shorting your two data lines together. This is a charging only port, it can't do any sort of communication, so they short the D plus and D minus lines together, and that's the way that you indicate that this is a dedicated charging port. And then lastly, on top of all of that, there's the Apple proprietary specification. So Apple released their own spec for charging prior to um, the USB spec being released because they wanted a standard to have all their devices adhered to. And the Apple spec is purely for charging only ports. So 
if you're plugging into a wall wart or something like that. And it essentially includes three device classes that allow either a 500 milliamp, one amp, or two amp power draw. And these devices are determined by measuring the voltages on the D plus and D minus lines. And these are typically achieved by doing resistor dividers on your supply voltage. Um, so if anybody wants a little bit more information on this topic, uh, below is the USB.org um, document library, essentially with all these different specs. And then I also have listed here a couple of sites that produce hardware that is capable of um, doing the hardware handshake for uh, charging downstream port. Thank you for listening today. Um, hope you learned a little something and feel free to check out DMC's website or call us for more information. Thank you.